in order to make any money, you need to have potential. There has to be the potential to go somewhere, the potential to do something, the potential to add value. Where in real estate, the potential is to force appreciation, right? All right. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm with Jamil Damji. He's the king of wholesale in the USA, and he's excellent at teaching it. And he has around 5,000 community members in Astro Flipping. And we're going to talk about his life. We're going to have some insight into his life. Jamil, how are you? Uh, you know, I'm uh, um, still in my Halloween costume since, uh, um, you know, even though it's we're mid-November. No, I'm just kidding, man. I, uh, I'm doing okay. If you can see here, I got a, a, a contraption on, had a little bit of a um, health scare a couple of weeks ago that led me to spinal surgery that I'm just recovering from right now. So, um, <clears throat> you know, lots of, lots of challenges in life and, you know, figuring out how to meet them all and overcome them and with grace is always uh a part of growth yeah that 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 is amazing and and i'm glad you're you're recovering and getting better um one of the things that i want to touch on is um prayer you you, you know this def de definitely a difficult time and i know that you use prayer uh to to kind of get yourself through life and, and manifest things and so i wanted to to talk a bit about, um, you know, wh what it is that you do um, when it comes to prayer, when you're getting through tough situations or you want to, you know, just get somewhere. You know, interesting, right? Um, it's, uh, you ever watch the award shows, whether they be the Oscars or, you know, the American Music Awards or Grammys, whatever they may be, and you see a person at the pinnacle of success and 9.9 uh, .9 out of 10 times the they will give glory to God. And it's, you know, you, you think, wait, hold on a second. How's God getting everybody to do this? Right. How is that? How, how, especially the, all these people at the highest level of achievement in our, you know, entertainment world, at least, or in, 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 in terms of fame and fortune and all that, how, how is it that so many people are attributing success to the creator? And I've been in many different situations in my life. They have not all been, the pinnacle of success. There have been many, many valleys, lots of trials, lots of tribulations. And uh, even my business had, you know, been boom, bust, boom again. And I've learned that you really can't control what's happening outside of you. You don't know what's going to come next month. You don't know what's going to come next week. Somebody could pass away that you are just completely attached to or, or that is like the center of your universe. You could um, have issues at home and you may end up, you know, having struggles with your spouse or marriage may fall apart. You may find financial difficulties. You could have health scares and um, all these things can happen. And there's nothing that I have found outside of prayer that I can honestly say has given me some peace given me a glimmer of light in unknown futures and in unknown corners that I'm walking around. And so because I have found tremendous power in going inside and seeking assistance from a higher, more benevolent being than, than a human could ever be, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm very much very much uh, a practitioner of, of, you know, believing that prayer meditation and really collaborating with your, with your source is a key to succeeding and just being all around happier. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it definitely shows when it comes to, you know, the way you, you, you present yourself and, and, and just your overall energy, you know, there, there, there's more to the, um, you know, to, to, to all the success. And, it, you know, it seems like you're humble. Um, and well, I've and been wanna, humbled. You've been humbled. <laughs> I've been humbled, right? There's, I don't, I don't know that, that people naturally come out, uh, successful. And then, you know, like the next step is humble, you know, I think, uh, yeah. you, uh, you can succeed and then you, you have it all taken away and then you understand, um, what it feels like to lose and you, uh, you get humbled. You get, I've, I've been, I've been humbled into, uh, this current version of, of who I am today. I have not always been like this. And there's 
people that will watch me today and may have known me 20 years ago and will be like, that's a different, is that the same guy? You know, it's a growth process, right? You, you are constantly evolving every minute, every day, every moment. So it's uh, the humility has come from uh, necessity. Yeah. And, and I want to touch on something, which is you, you just said that you've gotten humbled. So I know that you went through a tough time around 2008, 2009, um, that you, uh, you, you and your bank, you, you went bankrupt and your family too. Um, Correct. And it, is that like, how was that? And like, what was the reason that happened? And, and was that one of the things that humbled you to? to, to yeah. One of, one of many, many um, situations that re may, really made me reevaluate who I am what I am, how I show up, um, all of the things that make me, me. Right. And so, um, for sure, 2008, the, obviously the financial crisis that affected everybody. Uh, I was young in my mid twenties had just, you know, made millions of dollars and, uh, was recklessly spending. I had, you know, very much overstepped my, knowledge and 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 my my where i should have been uh, you know participating when with respect to real estate i i went from wholesaling to you know doing full scale condo conversions and not just one of them i had four going at the same time when the market tanked right and so mm -hmm. I, I i'm i'm you know i've always been an extreme guy so it's like you you know if one guy's like hey yeah um hey you know i'll i'll try one of those and i'll be like four you know, it's just like, that's how I am, right? Like, I'm, I've always been like that. And to my better, to my betterment and my detriment. So in that instance, it was to my detriment for sure. And because I've got such a great family base, I've got, you know, a sister, mother, father, who are just ride or die, you know, they're always there. And uh, I, because of that, had roped them into co-signing on construction loans that ultimately went belly up and that ended up making all of us homeless. Uh, we didn't actually file bankruptcy. So uh, just to make that correction. We never, we mm. never filed yeah. bankruptcy, but I went negative in my net worth. I went negative $1.8 million. And, you know, by the grace of God and all of the, you know, things that I've been able to accomplish since have paid long paid off that judgment and um, have been able to restore everything that was lost and more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it seems like you've always had an obsession with money. Yeah. And, and do you, do you know what that, you know, what, what the reason is like? You... Yeah. I I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny that you say that. Cause I, I, um, uh, I have this, you know, having, having a conversation with a therapist about this, to be, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, to be a hundred percent transparent. Uh, it, 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 it came from traumatic childhood, right. Being just poor, really poor and and then seeing how you know because i was poor because i was a person of color in in an area where we you know people of color were just starting to come in like it's you know i that I, I grew up in calgary alberta canada and the neighborhood that i grew up in was predominantly caucasian for uh you know for decades up until the early 19 the the early 1980s when uh, many, 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 many East Indians moved into a quadrant of the city, essentially taking it over and um, was a target for just a terrible time, a terrible time as a young person. And, and then seeing how economics gave people value, gave people status. And I think that the obsession that I have with money is probably because I saw that people will value you more when you have more. Mm -hmm. And when you are growing up and you don't fit in, you don't feel like you fit in, you don't look like anybody. And then, you know, the people that you, that you do look like, um, they're of course, like, you know, they, they, they're all struggling too. And so we're all like trying to, you know, crabs in a bucket. Everyone's just pulling each other down to try to get up on top of each other in, um, you know, survival. So I think that the obsession with money has come from not growing up, not having it. 
and never wanting to recreate that experience for any of my children. Mm. Yeah. And and you have a daughter. Two. Is that two daughters? And is that now one of the main things that keep you driven today? No. No. <laughs> and you'd be you 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 would you would think um Look, most people are kind of kind of come up on something like this, and this is this is one of the funniest things that I I, I see people say, right? Yeah, it's like they, you always ask them, "What's your why?" And then I, you, you, especially when in my world as a coach, right? I'll, I'll talk to people who are getting started in entrepreneurship, and and I ask mm-hmm. them, "Why are you doing this?" And then they always come mm-hmm. up with the violin, you know, the little violin, and it's like my family. <laughs> but it's like you know, at the end of the day, stop lying. You want it. Yeah, you want it. And look, your family will be the benefit of it and you will be will benefit from it and you'll be able to do a bunch of great things for your family and, and like and, and really flourish. But at the end of the day, I want to be better. I want to win. I want all of it. And and I'll 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 be straight with you, man. The having a lot of money doesn't mean that I have a I, that I have a better time bringing up my kids. In fact, it's it in many ways it's the exact opposite because you know your children can become entitled your children don't understand the value of what it means to earn it becomes a much more difficult task to to make them sturdy to make them want to uh, uh, strive and achieve because they've had it they have it all and i didn't realize that you know i didn't mm-hmm. realize that 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 i am who i am today because i had shit I had nothing mm-hmm. and so um but that hasn't stopped me because if I look <laughs> and that's what I'm saying, that's why I say yeah. that's why I say no, because because I know that it's making it harder for my kids. I know that it's making it harder for them to grow up. I know that that having all this wealth and being like this means that they are going to need to work extra hard not to be crappy. Yeah. And I still do it. I still wake up every day and I bust my butt to be better, to make more, to have more impact, to teach more people how to be financially free, to do this. Because I still think that at the end of the day, look, I didn't tell anybody that you, you click the link below and I'll show you how to be happy. I, I, I don't say that in a single ad. I don't. I say click the link below and I'll teach you how to make some money. Because that's what I've been able to understand. That's what I've been able to do in my life. I know that. I know that. I know that. Uh, I don't know that I have a lot <laughs> that I've been able to figure out many other things. I'm still working on it. Uh, but I know that. Yeah. What makes you think that people have this assumption or this concept of like, I am doing everything for my family and, and they don't feel like doing it for themselves is good enough. Like you obviously understand that that you are doing it for yourself and you own it and, and it's, and it's true. And, and money is the, is the reason why you get up and, and, and all that, regardless of whether you're, you know, you're doing it for your kids or not. Um, right. I know that I'm going to, I know that my kids are going to benefit from it. That's at the end of the day, my kids, my family, wife, my sister, my family, everybody's going to benefit from me getting up and doing the most for me, getting up and pushing the hardest for me, getting up and being the best for me, getting up and wholesaling more for all of those things. I know everybody around me is going to benefit, but God, let me tell you another thing, right? How many times have my kids say, be home more? How many times have my wife say, be home more? And how many times have I listened? Right? So, at the end of the day, I'm still going, right? So it's like there, like the, I think the pr- the problem that people have is that they, nobody's trying to be real. That that nobody really wants to like peel back the layers of BS because society is giving you this 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 uh, this version that says, "Hey, look, when somebody asks you why you want something, just just say your family, because you'll sound like a better guy. You you'll 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 be people will like that answer more." But it's not true. It's not true. And, and the, folks that, the folks that have come to the realization that everybody who's killing it is killing it for themselves and everybody around them is a beneficiary of you killing it for yourself. So the faster you get to that truth, the faster you're going to get to the place you're trying to get to. Because I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Success is an interesting club. And only the real get in. Mm, that's a mic drop right there. Boom. Yeah, that, that's a real value bomb. Um, and and let, let's let's tie this into um, to 
you know, comping, mm. you, you, you say, um, making money is what it, it is that you've done. And, and comping is like one of the things that you, you branded yourself as like, you're the best in the USA and, and all this stuff. And so how does that really, um, help you, uh, accomplish your goal? Great question. So in the business of real estate, right? In order to make money from something, we know that the adage is buy low, sell high, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to find something for less than, than you have to buy something at a deal. You need to be able to find potential in order to make any money. You need to have potential. There has to be the potential to go somewhere, the potential to do something, the potential to add value. Where in real estate, the potential is to force appreciation, right? We renovate a house, we do some work to it, we increase its aesthetics, we increase its, um, you know, uh, the serviceable life of the roof and ACs and all the things we, 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 we make it better. And we make it worth more. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, when we make an investment, and we make something worth more, we get paid for that, we get a return for that when we when we take it to the marketplace and sell it. Now, because you have to be able to find an opportunity for potential then the only way to do that is to see the difference between what something is and what something could be. Mm -hmm. And that's what comping is. Comping is understanding what something is and what something could be. And if I know what something is and I have a clear target of what it could be, then I know what I have in the middle to extract in terms of value. And that's how you make money, bro. That's why comping is so important in real estate, because if I know what something is and I know what something could be, then I know what my room is. And if I know what my room is as a wholesaler, then I know what slice of the pie I get to take, making sure that I leave enough of the pie for the person who's going to come and make money behind me. So in wholesaling, because we're not the guy who's going to come in and do the, you know, fixing and flipping primarily as a wholesaler, your job is to find potential. In fact, what I think wholesaling should really be thought of universally is selling potential. You're selling potential. And when you really understand it from that perspective, that when I'm wholesaling, I'm selling potential. That's when we stop with the nonsense of, oh, you're lowballing people. Oh my God, you're offering 10 cents on something <laughs> worth a dollar. Well, look, this thing's not worth a dollar till I spend 70 cents on top of the 10 that I'm paying you. I got to spend another 70 cents on this thing before it can be worth a dollar. So it ain't worth a dollar. It has the potential to be worth a dollar, but it's not worth a dollar today. Mm -hmm. So look, here's your 10 cents. I'm going to have to invest 70 cents to get it there. That's how this game gets played, right? And so it reevaluates and it recontextualizes for all the folks out there who don't understand what wholesaling is what wholesaling actually is. Now, the folks that are out there that are making lowball offers on beautiful properties that should never be wholesaled, which many people who watch a couple of YouTube videos think they can wholesale, go out and do, uh, that's where bad reputations come in the game of wholesaling. It's when people don't know what the hell they're doing. They start picking up the phone, making mistakes, ripping, um, you know, like, not, not, not ripping people off, but trying to rip people off, making just ridiculous offers. Just, and, then, and then on top of that, when they don't perform, right? When somebody doesn't understand, one of the funniest things, right, is that this is like wholesale mistake 101. Wholesaler mistake number one, okay? Lock up a property that needs a lot of work too high. Okay, why did you do that? Because I was bad at comping. Okay, why are you bad at comping? Because I didn't understand the rules of the game. Okay, so if you don't understand the rules of the game, why are you playing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it right? makes total sense. So, so, you know, the reason why I do so much work in the community where I, you know, straight out of comp in and all, the, all of the free stuff I do on my YouTube where I teach people how to do this, I'm trying to elevate the overall, the overall, uh, um, business, the overall, the overall uh, perception of what wholesaling is to the community so that we do better. Because when we collectively do better, people will start to expect better. And when people expect better, then they'll get better results. And when we get better results, we'll have a better name. But it's my job and I've seen it. And I've for the for the last like seven to 10 years, 
I have I have made it my job to elevate the game, to elevate the name, to elevate the industry, to professionalism, to high ethical standards, to transparency, to honesty, and to be really frank in, in the discussions of what is a property a wholesaler should look at, what our value to the marketplace is, how we add value to the marketplace, how we should be communicating to people, how we should be transparent to people, how we should present ourselves to people, all of the things. I, I, I clearly, clearly, clearly talk about this very often in, in, in you know, any of the YouTube videos that you'll see me talk you know, about this. I'm always on the up and up. I always tell people, be honest, be upfront, share, disclose, tell the things. Look, at the end of the day, the houses that we work on, the kinds of properties that wholesalers touch, they can't trip typically even be financed by the FHA or conventional loans because they're in that bad of disrepair. Cash buyers are the buyer for this kind of property. Mm -hmm. And if it's not that kind of property, don't bring it to me. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be looking at it. So when I get a brand new wholesaler, send me a house that's just been, I get, whole, I get, I get somebody who just starts and they're like, Hey man, I got this brand new construction in Austin. Uh, I think it would make a, a great wholesale deal. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, why, <laughs> why it's brand new. It's, yeah. It's brand new. Oh, uh, uh, blah, blah, uh, people want to rent there. So, so like, really? What value is there? What value have you brought to the table where somebody else couldn't have just gone to that builder and got that thing under contract themselves if they wanted to have a buy and hold and overpay for it? Really, right? So the, 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 the game, is, the game is, uh, is, is very, very clear cut, right? We got to understand how to find potential. We got to understand uh, how to then sell that potential. And then we need to learn how to create a business around that process and scale it. And that's what I've done. And, you know, I'm very grateful to all of the people in my life that helped me get here, all of the lessons and, and all of the nasty things that I had to learn. Uh, all, I'm gr grateful for all of it, man. It's, uh, even, you know, even for the stupid thing I'm wearing on my neck right now, I'm grateful for it too. I don't know why yet, but I'll, I'll figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> Everything makes you better. It sounds yeah. like that's the perspective you get. Yeah. Um, and, and I want to, so you, you mentioned that, that you have to know the rules. And so I, I looked at some of your content and one video that stood out is you're saying the rules of comping come from an appraisal. Mm -hmm. That's the person who is going to come and look at the property. And that's how we should underwrite the property. Correct. And, and so just how did you learn how to do that? Did, did you, like, were you smart enough to come and, and, and like talk to appraisals and have them, Show yeah, actually, I, I interviewed over 100 appraisers and went to appraisal school to learn what I learned. Oh, because wow. because guess what? Here's I'm going to newsflash. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot. <laughs> uh, how many how many real estate agents do you think learned how to comp in licensing school? Oh, it has to be less than 5%, I would say. None. None. Okay. Not a single agent is taught how to comp in licensing school. Think of that. The person who we professionally designate to sell and buy, to help us sell and help us buy property has no idea how to value it. Yet, we give them the task of finding the price, picking the price, putting it on the market, all of the things. Like we, and then we call them a fiduciary too. We give that person the, a fiduciary obligation, meaning that they have they have a legal responsibility to act in our best interest, yet we've given them no tools in, the how, in, in, in how to do so, right? Which is something that I saw very happen very often because you, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but one of the main ways that I get most of my wholesale deals is through real estate agents, mm -hmm. right? I love real estate agents. M many wholesalers are scared of them. I love them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I make so many deals, especially in today, today's like race to zero for real estate agent commissions. You know, you saw the whole, um, um, yeah, the, you know, thing lawsuit. with NAR. Yeah, like it's a race to zero right now for agents, right? And so agents need to start making friends with investors. That's what they need to do. They need to start yeah. working with somebody who's going to buy seven houses from them this month, not seven houses from them, um, you know, over a lifetime, if that even, right? Like yeah. that, be friends with the right people, be friends, work with the right customers, right? And so, yeah. you know, part of that in, what I would when I when I was working with all these real estate agents, they would send me these ugly houses, right? Houses that needed that had potential, 
And then they would pull comps from like completely different neighborhoods. They would pull comps that were completely different build generations, like, you know, like 30 years newer. They would cross every major road. They would cross freeways. They didn't, they'd be in damn different cities sometimes. They'd be like in a whole other city and they'd send me the comp and they'd be like, see, this is what it's worth. And I would, I'd say, how did you get that? And they, and they're just, they, they're like, uh, I don't know. And then I ask, well, how, why did you disqualify all of these comps right beside the property, right beside it, that tell a different story? Why? Ah, because you're full of shit. That's why. <laughs> Got it. So now that I understand what your motive is, your motive is to sell the house and to to to, and it's not even for as much money as possible. Because here's the facts, okay? That an extra 10 grand on a, on a house, an extra 20 grand on a house doesn't mean much in commissions. It's like a few hundred bucks mm-hmm. at the end of the day to the, to the agent. It doesn't matter. It's like it's not – they're not that making that much more money. But they, they – a lot of them, they tell a fabrication to a seller to get the listing. Mm-hmm. They say – they ask the seller, what do you want to sell the house for? 400 grand. They know damn well this house isn't selling for 400 grand. They know this house is at best worth 280,000 in its current condition. It would be worth 400 grand with a $80,000 remodel. Mm-hmm. But it ain't worth 400 grand right now. It has the potential to be worth 400 grand, but it ain't worth 400 grand right now. What does a realtor do? They come in, they take the iPhone pictures, you know, crap. Put it on the market, 400 grand. What happens? Sits and sits yeah. and sits. And you're 120 days in, and finally you're getting towards the end of the listing contract, right? Where now the agent's starting to sweat because they're like, we got to get something done or I'm going to get fired here. And so to me, that's when I have my more, you know, come to Jesus conversations with these agents because I can be like, look, I don't know what you, what bag of rocks you sold the, the seller here when you, when you, <laughs> told them this was when you allowed this thing to get um you know listed at 400 grand but you and i both know this thing has no it doesn't have a value anywhere near that right now you know but is your seller motivated or not yes do they need to sell this today yes okay are you aware that it's going to cost 80 grand to get this thing to where it needs to be to ever hit 400 yes i have a two hundred eighty thousand dollar offer for you in your email right now we're doing this or not yeah. And so that's the reality, man. And so like I have, I, and because I've been so, so transparent with the people, I've been so transparent with agents. Now I have real estate agents come to me before listing appointments and they'll ask me for what my buy price will be on a house before they go on the, on the appointment. And, and this is what they'll do on their listing appointments. They'll say, Mr. Seller. Okay. To, in full transparency, your house could be worth $400,000. Okay. Okay. You're going to need to spend $80,000 and have a really good design and, and really, really make sure that it's like perfect in order for us to achieve that. Okay. We may miss the boat. We may, we may pick the wrong materials. We may pick the wrong finishes and we may not get the money back. We might end up selling at a loss because we don't pick the right stuff. We're on last year's, we're on last year's model and everybody wants black and white and we pick gray and white. Okay. You, you, you understand exactly what I'm talking about in color schemes, right? We may screw up and you may lose all the investment that you make in this house to try to get it so that you have the opportunity of selling it for 400 grand. But there's potential that this thing can be worth 400. Okay. Right now, your house can't even be financed. So in order to even be financed, we got to get repairman in here, handy guy in here. We got to get AC service, roof fixed, you know, all these things done. It's probably going to cost you 30. And if we do that, Maybe, maybe I get you 330. Maybe. Okay. Now that's a good that's a good option, but it's not top of the market. You're leaving money on the table for sure. But we're hoping that a buyer is gonna want to come in and do some updates themselves and they'll be wanting to buy it at a discount because we're still selling this for 330 when we know that it's got a potential to be worth 400 with more investment. Uh, in today's market, I don't even think there's a lot of buyers who will come in and pay 330 for that either because buyers want it. They want it beautiful, right? They want it done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they'll say, or there's this guy. He's a cash buyer. He's the guy who will take the risk and add the value to the house and renovate it to make it worth 400 grand. But he can only pay 280 because he's got to take a risk. He's got a lot of investment to make in order to even get there. Now, 
If you sell to him, he pays me my commission. So the 280 is net to you. What do you want to do? That's it. And th that that's transparency. Yeah. That's transparency. Like, stop lying. Just yeah. don't lie. Just don't lie to them anymore. Just be honest about, hey, this is what it's going to take to be worth 400 grand. Okay. Do you have do you have 80 grand to renovate the house? Let's get the remodelers in here. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, that that that's a smart way to put it. And uh and I can tell why you, you're able to get these real estate agents to work with you who usually are, you know, not so fond of wholesalers. Am I right? Real estate agents yeah. don't really like wholesalers that much. No. Um no, because so, again, all because all because you get the bonehead wholesaler who comes in and sees that house listed at, at 400 that needs work and then writes an offer for 370. Okay. And, and then yeah. all of a sudden, all of a sudden the seller's like, Oh my God. Yes. And the agent's like, take this offer. This guy is completely mad that he gave you 370 for this house. Sign it, sign it, sign it. And then what happens? Ghost. Wholesaler doesn't even put in EMD, never even cancels, never even cancels. Okay. And then, then you got a seller. Sometimes they, they go so far as to pack up and move, expecting that on closing day, this thing is going to close. Mm -hmm. And, and it's the problem is the wholesaler doesn't have the, the backbone to call the agent and say, Hey man, I really messed up. I didn't learn how to comp. So when I did this, I just came in and offered you less than what you were asking, thinking that that it was a discount because the pictures are ugly. So I thought that you had pro priced it right. So I thought I'll just give you 30,000 less than what you're asking. And so I thought I had a deal. But then when I sent it out to people, everyone laughed at me. And then I realized that I am like $100,000 higher than what I should have locked this thing up at. And I didn't have the backbone to tell you. And I didn't know what to do next. So I just stopped answering your phone calls and now I'm back at my job right now working in the warehouse. <laughs> they should be transparent. <laughs> right? Yeah. People make mistakes. A mistake is, is yeah. normal in life. Yeah. And that's why it's like learning from somebody who knows what's going on, who's been around the block is important. Like it's not, a, this isn't a, this isn't a pitch to like, you know, come learn from me, learn from anybody, just learn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that's really interesting, and I'm glad you went through the story of like the whole way that you actually that you you got the the learning and experience to to be able to really comp and that that's really valuable to hear people that you know that, that you actually went in and went to an appraisal uh, license. Yeah, like I didn't actually get the license because there was no necessary. It wasn't necessary for me to do the test, but I did the classes and and I um and I interviewed you know over a hundred, I don't know the exact count, but over a hundred appraisers. And I just asked them all, what are the fundamentals that you look for? What are your, what are the, what are the rules that you go by? And the rules that kept coming back over and over again are what are in my appraisal rules document. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that, that sounds like a valuable document guys. You guys got to get that from Jamil after this call. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, what do you put this out on YouTube? We're going to put this out on YouTube. Um, you know, all social media platforms. And cool. Group, yeah. You can reach out to me, DM me, or um, I'll even give it to Julian and he can put it in the description below. You know, I think it's a document you definitely need to print out and post up on your wall in your office. If you're, if you're serious about this, if you're serious about this business, memorize that document. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree as well. Um, I want to, I want to go into something which is a, a little bit, you know, th there's this group of individuals you, Pace, Brent, uh, Jerry, you know, how is your relationship with them? And, and like, how is, uh, how's that been, you know, like get, getting together with, with the power crew, you know? Yeah. So, you know, um, Pace and I, it's like the, the greatest collaboration in the history of what we do in this business, right? In, in real estate, you know, the two of us, we're competitors, we're fierce competitors, right? We don't own any businesses together. We compete for coaching students. We compete for deals. Um, but the, um, the, the thing that him and I have that we, we thrive on is that we love each other and that we always decided we didn't always decide we made a decision that we mm -hmm. were going to choose to collaborate and help each other over trying to push one another out of the way or down. 
So how we compete now is on who is going to bring more value to each other. That's how we compete with each other. Who's going to do something cooler for the other guy? Who's going to bring a relationship to the table that's going to be more meaningful than the other guy? Who's going to who's going to bring a business opportunity to the table that's going to make us more money? Who's going to do that? Who's going to be this? Who's like that's we we compete in positive metrics. Yeah. That's how we compete. And so like the winner, the winner gave more. You know what I'm saying? Like that's cool. Yeah. Right? That's and so that's the friendship I have, right? That's a, and it's a beautiful friendship and you know, it's been the same with Jerry and Brent and, you know, it's um, they're 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 just fantastic people. Right. They're they're good men. They're good, good guys, good dads, good husbands, good. You know, everything that they do is is of high quality. And I think that it's important to surround yourself with people of high quality because then you become higher quality yourself. Right. Uh, you 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 can't you can't be low quality in high quality company. So there's, you'll either learn how to be better quality or high quality will kick you out. That <laughs> it's just a trophy. Yeah. yeah. Really, that, that's such a great motto to live by. And, uh, and, and, and is, th this is what it looks like to be at that level where, where you're really like working with other individuals who are also at a high level and you guys are just, just competing on how to <laughs> add value to each other. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, isn't that, isn't it strange though? Like that, that's yeah. what we compete about, right? That's, that's the thing you were trying to one up each other on. Like, hey, I brought this relationship to the table and it made you a hundred grand this month. Yeah, well, I brought this to the relationship and it made you two hundred grand this month. Damn it, he beat me. Okay, I got to get him. I got to do something even better for him next month. Like, bro, yeah. you know how do you like I, that? That's like you're. That's like having um a of a, a, like a friend who who is growing but is like pushing you to do the same. Yeah, and you don't want to lose. You don't want to be a loser. No, that no, would never. suck. We're too competitive. Yeah, never, too competitive. Yeah, that that, that that's amazing. Um, that, that's really interesting, and I'm really glad to give us some insight on how your relationships work. Um, when you know, how did you get started? Like, were, you weren't always a wholesaler. You weren't always in real estate. Like, what what was it that you like? What was your life before? So I was on a track to become a physician. Right. I'm uh, an East Indian descent. And so mm -hmm. growing up, you know, there's a lot of Indian doctors. It's our thing. You know, yeah. we, we own we own hotels and we're doctors. Right. That's that's yeah. how we rock. And so um, I had a choice in life. It was to become a doctor or don't come home. So mm -hmm. I, I, I tried. I, I went and got a degree in science and I did well, but I didn't get into medical school. And that mm -hmm. killed me. Right. It, it like mm -hmm. devastated me because it's somebody else who's not me decided what was going to happen with my life. Mm -hmm. And and that changed me that that fundamentally changed me. You know, when that when that decision came down and I was I was overlooked or passed on for entrance into medical school, it broke me, broke my heart. Yeah. And um, but it but it pushed me into becoming an entrepreneur. And even in my first try in entrepreneurship, I failed, right? I, I, I started, well, I didn't start, but I entered into a media company that was already um, in business. And this is the early 2000s. And they were essentially cold calling businesses out of the yellow pages, telling them that they should invest in building a five page website because this thing called the internet is real and you should probably be on it, right? So... Yeah. That was the pitch, right? And I was really good at it. I, I would, I literally, my, my list was a yellow pages, like big, thick yeah. yellow book, right? For all you millennials who don't know what they are, it was this big book they used to drop off every year to your house. And it had every business phone number in it. And businesses would pay $20,000, $50,000 a year to get an ad in that. Like they, everybody spent tremendous amount of money to put an ad in the yellow pages because that's how people found people. There was no Google. Right. Yeah. So, so I <laughs> called people out of the yellow pages to, to get business. And, you know, that business failed because we didn't understand one of the fundamentals of business, which is know your costs. So I was so good at, at selling websites that I sold so many of them that after my first week of, of working for this company, they offered me partnership so that I would stay. 
so that I would train and stay and help bring cl- clients and customers because I, they were hemorrhaging. They had were making no cash flow. I came in and in a week, I, I was selling six websites a day, right? <laughs> so, so, and we would charge $600 for a website, 100, 100 bucks a page, right? Unfortunately, it cost us $700 to build a website. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was so good at the job that I put us out of business, but it put me in proximity to people who were in real estate. And there I saw an opportunity to basically fill an order for a house that somebody was trying to buy um, so that they could demolish it and build duplexes. And, you know, that led me on this path of, of figuring out how to wholesale. I didn't have a mentor in wholesale. I didn't even know what wholesaling was. I thought I invented it. I'm not kidding you. I, I honestly thought I invented it because when I had this opportunity to buy a house and sell a house at a profit, but I had no money to do it. I asked all of my relatives if anybody would lend me money for just a few days so I could do this transaction. Nobody would help me. Nobody would help me. So I started calling real estate attorneys and a real estate attorney who had just finished law school and didn't have a secretary yet answered the phone himself. I explained my problem and he says, yeah, what you're talking about is simple. It's, you can do it all through contracts and it's called a, it's called a skip transfer is what he called it. And in mm. Canada, that's what the process is called, the skip transfer. Yeah. So I, uh, I was like, cool, let's, uh, let's skip transfer. Let's go, you know, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let's get the skip transferring. Come on, you know, and what so I do? I, I do my first deal, I make 50 grand. Oh my God. And I and, went- and, and, and how much money was that for you? Like, in, I mean, bro, in the I whole was- scope. I was, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I'm, we're talking about at that time in my life, I may have been taking home $2,500 a month. Yeah. Yeah. So that was revolutionary. Literally, you made like two years worth of income in one transaction. I was so scared when I got that cashier's check. I didn't cash it for like four months and I had folded it and I put it in my wallet, just holding it. And that somebody sounds- had to, somebody told me like, dude, cash that, that thing, dangerous. bro. It's, it's yeah. gonna, yeah, you're gonna, it's go, it goes stale after six months. Like you gotta take that to the bank. And so you know, I cashed it eventually, but it was, it was, but I mean, I went crazy after that. Once I figured out that you could do this, I went ham. I, I like, I was cold calling out of the newspaper, right? I would get, I'd get the, because my first lead, I was walking my dog, and I called a for rent. And I asked the person who was renting the house if they would want to sell it instead of renting it. And then I just, you know, asked about price and, you know, figured it out. So then I was like, oh, wow, you can you can call rentals. So then I would get the newspaper and I would see the classified sections of the newspaper and I'd go down and I just call the rentals every day and I'd find out who wanted to sell a house. And that's how I did it. Yeah, that's amazing. How much did you end up making that first year wholesaling? If you remember at all. I don't remember the first year, but I know that in that time I made 12 million. Wow. I mean, that's, that's incredible. That's, and that's uh, between 2002 to 2000 and end of seven. 2002. So five years you made 12 million. That, that's more than 2 million. That's like, yeah, that, that's a lot, man. I mean, wow. Congrats to you and and well, I got nothing to show for it from then. So because you know, like, that 2008 yeah. happened, right? Yeah. And, and so, like, what happened? Like, you got you got introduced to uh, conversions, like turning. Uh, I I no, I just saw like because I started wholesaling apartment buildings, and I saw one of the developers I wholesaled an apartment building to pulled up in a Rolls Royce. Yeah. And I was like, and he had a <laughs> fine lady too, dude. Like, yeah. You know, I was just smoking. Yeah, I'm like, and this guy looked like a knob, like fat, you know, all like, I'm just like, it's like this guy was just, you know, um, his name is, uh, I'm not going to say his last name, but but if he's watching this, Dominic, you know who you are, looks like an upside down (laughs) pear, basically, right? Like, like a strange looking dude, right? Um, Balding, comb over, all the things, right? Just, just total, and just uh, like this knockout walks out of the car and, and he pulls up in this thing. And I'm like, oh, I want that. Yeah. Mesmerized. You know? Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, 
how do I, well, if I just like, okay, I got to do what he does. Yeah. And, that, and that's what he was doing. Yeah. Condo conversions. Condo conversions. He was my okay. buyer. He was who I was selling them to. And then the last four that I got under contract, I didn't sell. I closed. Right. And then 2008 happened. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh man. That, that sounds like, had it been a, 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 a little bit earlier, you probably would have pulled it off. And yeah, yeah. Honestly, a year <laughs> earlier, they'd be calling me a savant. They'd be like yeah. the man who came in and wholesaled his way to the real estate developer. Um, you know, people magazines, sexiest man. And I'm just kidding. Like, you, you know, like all the, yeah. all the things, right. I was legit. Um, they, I, they, you know, you're, you when you fail, when you fail, right. Um, they love to drop you from his, from the height of your success. Mm -hmm. Right. They, people love the fall. They love watching the fall. Right. So, um, you know, I don't know how they would have described me, but it would probably have been pretty, pretty gruesome. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds like, man, it, it would have been, it been such an interesting story. Um, well, let's talk about your community because that's one of the greatest accomplishments you have now. Right. Um, you have 5,000 members. Um, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Nearly 5,000 members in the community. You know, we'll hit that. We'll hit that any day now. And, um, it's, it's, it's phenomenal, bro. Like, there, the the level of success we have in the astro community is is disproportionately greater than anyone and like any other coaching pro program in wholesaling that exists. If you com if you combine them all, yeah, I'm not yeah, kidding. That's... If you combine them all and took the successes from all of them combined and then compared them to what we do, we're st we still have more successful people. Our ratio that's of success incredible. is still greater. So how is it? Why? It's because of the way I do it. I, I like, I, I, I wrote the book on wholesale. I, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I understand this at a visceral level, at a visceral level. It's in my DNA to do this, right? Like, like I said, I, I thought I invented it. It, it was already happening in the United States, but in, for, for, for all intents and purposes in Canada, I did. And yeah. so, you know, the, the, the fact is, is that when you've got the, right. the when you've got one of the pioneers of the business model, um, that's where you go to learn. And that's why this community is so great because for the most part, the majority of the community just does deals with each other. I mean, they just, it's just like, they're just trading deals back and forth. Like you got a buyer. Yeah. You got a buyer. Uh, I got a deal here. Not, you know, connect the dots. It's like, for, if you're already an established wholesaler with a buyer's list, you're irresponsible, not joining Astro just for the deal flow. Just for the deal flow. Right. If you if you have deals and you have ever been looking for a buyer, you're irresponsible not to join Astro just for the better paying buyers. The community itself is worth 10 times the very low entry cost. It just the community, let alone the knowledge that I impart from being one of the best in the business. And I and I, I don't feel cocky when I say I'm the best in the business. I have not yet been challenged. I don't. There's nobody out there who can, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I personally think that if you went to an appraisal school and you interviewed 100 appraisers, you are one of the top experts in this. And and so I, I, I definitely I mean, that that sounds right to me um what when it when it comes to the the apartment buildings that you were wholesaling is is that also something that you guys do in your community or is it is it yeah uh, i mean we, we you you can wholesale anything right um yeah i i primarily tell people and teach people to focus on single family because there's just more buyers for it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. easier to do you know you can hit you can hit a lot of singles and doubles that way mm -hmm. I, I i i tell people stay away from you know at least in the beginning really getting into the big commercial stuff. I mean, I've wholesaled a bank before, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend starting with that. You know, <laughs> that sounds like a complicated transaction. <laughs> it wasn't really complicated at all, but no? you know, it sounds good to say. Yeah. It sounds like a, like, like a big dog. Like and now I'm talking to, you know, um, some mergers and acquisitions attorneys and I'm, I'm, I'm putting together the process of how to wholesale businesses. Mm. 
Oh, oh, wow. So, yeah. okay, because I, I know there's a whole wave. I actually took part of um, and, and I was learning how to do that, of how to buy a business that is from a baby boomer that's retiring. And I never heard of that, like wholesaling a business. But that sounds like it could be possible because you can wholesale anything. Yeah, well, look, what, 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 what a wholesale deal requires is liquid money, like a buyer with liquid money, and uh, an opportunity for that buyer. So, you know, wholesaling businesses at the end of the day, you know, the SBA, anything, any business that is that could be financed with an SBA loan could be a wholesalable business. Yeah. Right. And there's there's tons of buyers out there who have qualified for SBA loans that are looking for businesses to plug into their um, pre-qualified funding. And so you're just connecting the dots. And I'm and I'm at the, in the process right now of learning and gaining more knowledge and expertise about that. And then, you know, one day I'll teach my community how to do that. And so in addition to teaching them how to wholesale houses and buildings and apartment buildings, and then we'll soon be wholesaling uh, businesses. But it's all going to be under the Astro Flipping banner, you know. That, that's amazing. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, quick, quick. Are you um you have uh, up until four or you have a little bit more time? I got a uh, I have two minutes before my next. You got two minutes. OK, let's wrap up. OK. Um, all right. So, um, Jamil, um, you know, tell us a little bit about the, the TV and, uh, that, that you're working on that you're, you're on, uh, triple digit flip. And- yeah. I got a show on a and E with Pace Morby, my sister and Laura called triple digit flip. We did two wonderful seasons of that television show right now. Pace and I are in negotiations on a new show. Uh, I can't give too many details about it quite yet because it's not done, but, mm-hmm. um, let's just say it's going to be, uh, a, a way a different run. show, a way different show than the first one. Um, and more in line with what we actually do on a day-to-day basis. So I'm excited about it. That sounds amazing. So Jamil, thank you for coming on today to A-List Count Conversations. Of course. Where can we find you and, and, and learn more about your, you know, your exciting life and what you got going on? My, my best place to come and hang out with me is on my YouTube channel, just youtube.com slash Jamil Damji. And you can also find me on Instagram at J-D-A-M-J-I and uh, TikTok, whatever, all the places. I'm, I'm all over social media. Um, send me a DM. I respond. Would love to connect and um, show up to anything that I do on, as a live stream. I go on Wholesale Hotline every Monday night. Um, I'm on uh, lives throughout the week on my YouTube channel. So I'm, I'm constantly showing and teaching people how to do the business. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to help you get whatever situation you're in right now, at least financially changed. That's amazing. Jamil, thank you so much for being generous with your time. Of course. Um, I appreciate it. Um, All right, guys. So thank you for another episode and hope to have Jamil on in the future. All right. Take care, brother.